Number one, using shift tab. So I used to always double click to get into MIDI clips, but I realized you could just hit shift tab and this toggles between the different views in Ableton. So if I click this MIDI clip and I hit shift tab, it'll take me into this window where I can edit the notes and then I can hit shift tab again and get out of that. I used to always reach down into the bottom right corner and click but it's much faster to just hit shift tab. So if you're trying to navigate between your session really quick, say you wanna get into session view, hit tab, back into arrangement view, hit tab again, shift tab, makes things super quick. Say I need to go into this MIDI clip and delete all the notes really quick, I'd click the clip, hit shift tab, command A, and either hit zero to deactivate them or delete them. Number two, drawing in notes with your arrow keys. So I used to always draw in notes by holding down notes on my MIDI keyboard and then clicking them up but I found that I can just hold a chord down and hit the arrow key and wherever my cursor is, it'll start creating a note. So I'm hitting my right arrow and I created these notes and now I'm extending them. This is defined by the grid length. So if I take my grid, make it super wide and I move that blue line wherever I want these notes to start, hold the chord down and just start hitting the arrow key. And then you can start playing another chord Wherever that blue line is in the window, once you hold those notes down and hit that arrow key, they'll create right there. So just like that, I created a super quick chord progression. Tip three is advanced automation shaping. This tip works with both the envelopes and automation at the clip level and at the track level. I'll start at the track level. So if I select this clip and hit Z to zoom in the clip a bit, Usually I would click a point here, click a point here, click another point, and we can go ahead and shape things how we want to. And then you might also know that if you hold option, you can bend the curve like that. But there's also some other things you could do. Since about live 10 or so, you've been able to do these insert shape functions. So you can create a ramp just like that. Then you can scale it down like that to create that same thing we just created earlier, but way quicker. And then you could also, if you hold option, you can make things go both ways like that. So if I wanted to make some really quick volume ramps, what I might do is select all this, insert this shape, scale it down, and then command D all the way down. Then you could select further, say scale it up, scale it down inverse, or you can make it go both ways. If you hold option and start dragging like that, you can drag some more on the end. You can make it change in intensity over time, make it go inverse if you go really far. Let's delete that and try it with another shape. So let's select this and try a sign. Then I can do this, scale it down, scale it down, duplicate it, squeeze it towards the middle, and then let's say let's change the intensity over time. So let's say I wanted to have it start out subtly like this, and then we can make it increase over time. Just by doing those really quick things, we can create a really quick manual tremolo effect. Like I said, the same thing works at the clip level. So if I wanted to adjust my pitch bend over the course of this MIDI clip, I can go in here and make sure I'm selected to pitch bend and start drawing some stuff in. So let's say for this first chord, I wanted it to get really wobbly towards the end. So I can insert a sign, change my grid a little bit, scale it down like that, make it less intense at the start, and let's see what that sounds like. So if we were to play that right now, it would sound like this. But let's make it way less intense. So if we scale it down by holding option and dragging on this left bottom corner here, we can make it increase in intensity over time. This is a really quick way for you to be able to draw in vibrato like a musician would do when they're playing a guitar solo or a synth solo and they're playing with the pitch bend wheel. I even tried making it go up and down in the scale. Next tip is saving your favorite tracks in a vault folder. So if I really liked how this piano track sounds and I'd like to be able to use it again later, a really quick and easy way to do that is to just take the track and drag it to a folder over in your file browser. So all I did was drag it in and now that track is saved. So I can drag it right back in and have it just like that. 
As you can see, I do this all the time and I often do it with my favorite synth sounds. I use this as a place to store sounds that I use a lot or if I'm working on something and I come across a sound that I really like but it just doesn't match what I'm working on at the time, I'll save it here and use it later as like a song starter. As you can see, I have a ton of these. Let's try pulling a few in. So if I drag this in, let's see what this is. So just like that, I dragged in this VST that I might use. The difference between doing this and say saving presets in another way is that you can have all these different instruments from different VSTs all saved in one place. And you can also get all the processing that comes with it. So if I drag these tracks in, I might not only have the instrument, but any other effects I have in the chain as well. So if I drag this one in called Wah Wah Wah, I not only have the serum patch, but I also have the EQ and the panning effect I put on it as well at the time. My only caution is don't double click these tracks when you're trying to drag them into your session because they're saved as a .als file, which is an Ableton Live Set file. And if you double click one, you will open up an Ableton Live Set with just that track in it. So when you're using this method, just drag the tracks in as you need them. My next tip is using a MIDI file to determine your bounce length. So when I first started using Ableton, I used to click to the last note that I heard in the song. Then I would look at the number, and when I'd go to export, I would remember that number and type it in. That's not a very easy way to do things. What you can do instead is you open up a blank MIDI track using Command Shift T, and then drag the selection that you want, create a MIDI clip using Command Shift M. Now that I have this clip, I can just drag it to however long I want the song to be. Whenever I go to export, I just click this clip, Command Shift R, and I'm already good to go with the selection that I want. This is really helpful if you're exporting songs and you need to make sure that they're at the exact same length every time, because often in my sessions, the songs don't always start at bar zero. Sometimes they'll start a few bars in because I like to have a lead in, that kind of thing. And this saves you from having to manually know exactly where to click every single time you wanna bounce a song at a certain length. And you can also use this to mark out different sections of your song. So you can see my locator says verse one from this locator to this locator. All I'd have to do is select Split the clip with Command E, Command R, rename to verse one. Split the clip here, rename to verse two, and so on. All right, the next tip is extracting the rhythm and feel from an audio file and applying it to a MIDI clip. So say I have an audio file of some drums and I really like the feel, but I don't like the sounds. This is the case I have here. I have this drum loop. So I wanna keep that feel and the rhythm, but I wanna replace it with the sounds of an 808. So all I need to do here is right click, hit extract groove, and it'll take a few seconds to do that. Then it'll show up in this groove pool over here. All I have to do is then drag that groove. You can see it creates a MIDI clip, but all I have to do is drag this on top of this MIDI clip here. And now the feel of this 808 goes from this to this. And by the way, here's another way to really quickly pull up instruments that you use all the time. So I'm gonna pull up my favorite synth serum with no clicks, watch. I have an iPad off to the side running an app called Soundflow. And what this does is allows me to really quickly pull up things that I use all the time, whether they're audio effects or instruments. So in this case, I have one of my favorite synths, Serum, and I have it saved in a rack. And then I have the parameters that I use all the time already mapped so that I don't have to map them every single time I use this synth. So we can quickly create one of these racks with this piano. Let's say I always use this piano with the stock Ableton reverb and then a utility plugin for some volume. So I can group all these together with a rack by hitting Command G there. And then I can save a preset, my favorite piano. And now this rack with your favorite things can be pulled up at the click of a button. So you can quickly get to these by going to user library and then going to presets, instrument rack, and they'll be saved in there. And then you can also add them to your collections, all that kind of stuff. And then I just did the cherry on top and that is using the iPad to be able to quickly pull up all these instruments. If you learned something useful in this video, please drop a like.